In this segment, I'm going to demonstrate uh, deploying a, a app, actual application in Kubernetes. Um, we've kind of been building, going over all the building blocks in previous segments that I've recorded in this playlist. Um, now we're going to kind of use all those together to actually deploy WordPress uh, backed by a MySQL database, uh, all inside Kubernetes. So the first thing we need to do is create persistent volumes that WordPress and MySQL can claim. Uh, these are just NFS shares behind the covers. Um, we also need to create a secret that contains the MySQL root password, and you'll never guess it. Um, Next, we create a persistent volume claim for MySQL. MySQL is going to need something, you know, a persistent storage for its database. Uh, so this is the claim for that. We're saying we want two gigabytes. We're, we're not. We don't think that we're going to get very many posts on this thing. So we're uh, we're starting at two, two gigabytes. Next, we create our MySQL deployment. So this can. This is kind of a culmination of all the principles that we've built up in previous segments. We've got uh, the MySQL root password, which is the env uh, an environment variable that this this is the from the Docker hub MySQL image. I've, pull, I've pulled it down into my local registry here, but this is the same one from the Docker hub. It's unmodified and it expects you to set this environment variable when it comes up. And so that password is going to be read out of our secret. We also have a volume mount that uh, maps to the, our persistent storage volume claim. And that will be mounted at varlib MySQL, which is where MySQL stores its database. So next we create the MySQL service that's gonna sit in front of all pods that offer this, the MySQL service. In this case, we, we only have one replica because MySQL doesn't just naturally scale out. Um, but what this does do is create a resolvable name for the MySQL database on cluster. And so you can see that you know, whenever we access this service name, we're going to get the MySQL service you know, connecting to this port on the backend pods. Next, we create a persistent volume claim for WordPress. Uh, the Docker Hub's version of WordPress stores uh, the WordPress data in a can store it in a persistent volume. Um, and so we're just doing what the container expects here. And again, these are controlled by these pods are being controlled by deployment, which pods can come and go and die and whatever. So, you know, if, if you want there to be um, consistency, then these things need to be backed by persistent storage. So we're, we just created our, my uh, our WordPress deployment here, you can see that we are. This is the database host. This host name is the name of our MySQL service, if you recall. And then the database password is read out of the same secret that the MySQL container read it out of. And then here are the here's the volume out for our persistent storage and the volume that maps our volume name to a persistent volume claim. Next, we're going to create a WordPress service, which something that I haven't co covered before is a service of type node port. And you'll see under ports that there's a node port field here. What this tells Kubernetes to do is to open up port 8080 on all the nodes in the cluster. And when connections come into that, forward those connections to the WordPress service inside the cluster. Um, this is not recommended at scale because you could easily see where you're going to have node port collisions and things like that. And that's basically what all this is about. Um, there's better ways to do this when you're doing it at scale, but for this demonstration, it works. So we just conjured our WordPress site and it came up right here. So we can just bring that over here and we will you know, uh, demo admin. I'm just initializing this so that we can um, later on, we're going to blow away parts of the framework and show that it's self healing. Confirm admin and demo. All right. Admin open. All right. There we go. 
So we've got our WordPress site up and running and like all WordPress sites, it's already out of date. <laughs> and uh, so let's create a post real quick just um, to show that when we start messing with parts of the infrastructure that it it, it is maintaining persistence. So my first post, yay. All right, we're gonna publish that because that is world changing right there. You can see my first post, yay. All right, so we're gonna go back here and we're gonna wreak some havoc. So let's delete the WordPress pod. Okay, so the new one's coming up and it's already bound to the service. Did that hurt us at all? It did not. Um, if we come over here and we can see that the pod was recreated. What if we delete the MySQL pod? It gets blown away before it's even finished terminating. The new one's coming in. Um, you can see that the MySQL service is orphaned right now, but just joined up. And now if we come over here, we are still up. And the pods are still there. What if we just blow everything away? Now this obviously will take the service down, but does it take it down permanently is the question. So we do this and we can see that the service is orphaned. It's trying to connect to and uh, waiting for an endpoint to register with the service, but it's not happening. Um, let's go ahead and do that then. So we're just gonna redeploy MySQL and WordPress. We'll watch those come up. There we go. And if we go here, the site is still up and it still has our post. So it maintains persistence even though we blew it away and recreated it and killed different parts of it. So this kind of shows off the real power of Kubernetes.